As promised last week, I'm going to take another look at those two handheld oscilloscopes that I got. We're going to try them in the real world to align a VCR, just the tape path. I've taken a perfectly good machine, I've messed with it, now it won't play a tape at all. We're going to check the alignment on both my analog scope, my original UNI-T digital, and we'll look at the two handheld scopes and see which, if any, will work. I don't know. Maybe they'll work, maybe they won't. Let's check it out. We're going to do a tape alignment on this, a tape path alignment on this Toshiba, which is really a Funai uh, deck. I'm going to uh, attempt to do it with one of these cheap, actually I'm going to attempt to do it with both of these cheap scopes. We're going to compare it to analog scope and take a look at the waveforms on analog versus digital. I'll first take a look at the, the, the waveform on the Unity just to give you guys a baseline of what that looks like for looking at RF compared to the analog scope. And then we're going to hook up these meters, or these scopes, and actually attempt to do a tape path alignment on these. I've never tried it. I don't know what it's going to look like. I've just got the analog scope connected now, and I've only got the trigger for the analog scope. The other one is just going to trigger off the waveform. But let's take a look at what, how bad I've been able to make this. I just kind of screwed around with the adjustments to give me something to play with here. So this is a, uh, a manufactured video so to speak. I've created a monster. Let's take a look at the waveform and let's take a look at the TV first and then the waveform. So as you can see we have serious alignment problems here and that's how bad it looks on the analog scope. It's pretty bad. There's our head switch point right there. So we've got one full, this is one full field. Let's take a look at it on the UNI-T just for to see how bad it looks on that one and then we'll look at the other scopes. So I've connected the trigger uh, probe to the UNI-T as well so that it's now got uh, triggering from the head switch point. As you can see, the waveform on the UNI-T is something that I can probably work with. So I'm going to try it on the UNI-T first and then I'm going to make it bad again. And then uh, we're going to try it with one of these handheld, actually both the handheld scopes. So first things first, I'm going to go to my entry side guide, which is the one on the left. and I'm not going to show you me adjusting it, I'm just going to show you guys the scope. And we'll see what happens as I turn the guide. Okay, I think I've got that probably about as close as I'm going to get it. We'll go to the other guide. This is the one on the right side of the drum. If I can get my tool in here. And that's, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. There's a little bit of a level shift, but that's, that's what's coming off the machine. There is a bit of a DC offset there between one and the other. If I go back and show you it on the analog scope, this is how well I've been able to do it with this Uni-T. Now remember, this one is useless for complex waveforms, but for looking at the RF, I think I've got it pretty flat. Although it does look a lot better on the other scope, as you'll see. There's the waveform on the analog scope. I'll try to get my focus a little better. So it's close. I'm not perfect. The analog scope will I can make it perfect. No problem. Maybe I can't. Maybe that's as good as it's gonna get. That's good though. I mean, there's a bit of an offset there between one uh, waveform and the other, like one head and the other is a slight DC offset, but it's pretty flat. I don't know that I can make it any better. I think that's probably as good as it's going to get and of course the picture is fine so I'm going to mess it up again and this time we're going to use the the handheld scopes and we'll see how I can do it on that so I'm just going to just randomly screw around with the guides
just make it make it a real mess. So remember, that's how bad I made the waveform. Are we going to see anything that resembles anything like that on the first handheld scope? No, we're not. Take a look at what it shows. It is useless. So yeah, that's that's the mess that uh, that this one shows. And I'll look at the monitor. I'm not going to look at the analog scope. I've got them both hooked up, but I'm going to look at the monitor and just try to make it resemble something that resembles more like a picture on the monitor and see whether this this mess on the scope becomes any more recognizable. But I think that this is a this is a complete boss on this one. As you can see, the, the, the waveform on the scope isn't even changing. Okay, I've got the picture back to normal. And my waveform on the analog scope is showing that the signal is flat. But we didn't really see much of anything change on here. I'm going to mess up the entry side guide. And we'll see that you really don't notice anything changing. So this one is completely useless. Messing it up again per purposely. And we're going to go get that B side little scope and see whether it can uh, can do the job but this one here no you're not even using this scope to look at uh, the uh, tape path alignment it's it just it can't do it it just can't do it it's completely useless for tape path alignment so let's grab the other one unfortunately I guess when I took this scope apart to show it to you guys I must have broken something in it because channel one no longer gives me anything if I put it onto channel one, let's just uh, menu. Channel two is on there. If I go to channel one and I turn channel one on, and turn channel two off, because it, it seems like channel channel one is displaying the same thing as ch channel two. If I move my input over, it's not working. So something got messed up in here when this thing was taken apart. I broke it. Oh well. I'm kind of ticked. Uh, let's just turn channel one off. We'll just use channel two. At least channel two still works. Will I or will I not be able to align this machine? Well, this is certainly showing a much more promising waveform than the other piece of junk. Let's just see what I can do looking at this screen and only the screen and the monitor. So let me get down here and just start tweaking. Looking at the TV monitor now. Okay, that's looking can be coming in a little bit better. How are we looking on the scope? Try to get this so it shows up on camera without too much too much too much reflection. Uh, if I can get this waveform flat on here, then this scope actually would be a useful scope. And if I hadn't broken channel one, which I might have to take apart and see why it's not working, but let's just see what happens here. If they start to bring the alignment a little closer. look at that well this one actually works I remember my my trigger I don't have a trigger on here so it's going to flop around a bit but that waveform is looking pretty flat and if I look at the TV the picture is fine and if I look at the uh, the analog scope that waveform is not bad and I did it on this I did it on this one can we put a little more gain on here? What do we get here? 50 millivolts? Yeah, you know, we can... Oh, my tape just got to the end. I rewind the tape. So yeah, this one would do the job. If my only my trigger was working, and I could trigger it from the other channel, then uh, this waveform would be acceptable for doing this type of work. So I take back everything bad I said about this. Although video, looking at video, no, it still, it still sucks. If I if I hooked up to the video output, uh, you would see a very 
well, we've done it before. It, it doesn't look good. Video output does not look good on this scope. But at least this little one here, this, this is the B-side that I reviewed last week. At least for tape path alignment, this one would do the job, right? You can see the waveform's flat. Yes, it's, it's not triggering properly because I don't have a, a separate trigger. But it is showing the waveform. And if we look at it compared to the other scope, there's how it looks on the analog scope. Could I get it any better? Well, let's see. Can I get it better than that? I think that's probably about as good as it's going to be, right about there. Yeah. Yeah, that's about as good as it's going to get. Didn't do too bad. And there it is on the Unity. Now the Unity is 100 megahertz bandwidth. The the little um, B side, it's 50. But there's the waveform on the Unity. Despite I'm not triggering it from uh, the, the uh, head switch point, it's just triggering it off the waveform. That looks pretty darn good. So I'd have to say the B side scope that I reviewed. This one's a pass for at least doing this type of work. I just noticed something about this VCR. It's got an anti theft tag stuffed inside it. This must have been on display in a store. And they opened it up and put one of those anti-theft tags in it. So if someone tried to take the machine away, it would set off the alarm. <laughs> Never seen that before on the inside of the machine. I don't know, maybe they put them in from the factory like that, but I doubt it. I'm sure probably a store put that in there in their inventory or I don't know maybe they did put them in at the factory but that's just weird I've never seen one stuck to the inside of a machine before anyway um, I guess that's about it I think that uh, that 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 little red scope the B side is one that probably would be useful for doing this type of work although it's not again it's no good for looking at complex waveforms but uh, looking at the RF from the video head it'll certainly do the job for that anyway thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one bye